Okay, let's take a look at some of the cool things coming out in the Salesforce Spring 20 when it comes to flow. The first one is for screen flow. So I cheated a little bit. I created some choices here, but this is kind of a really nice usability for sanity's sake. So I'm going to create a new screen and we're just going to call this test. We're going to keep things nice and simple. I'm going to use a radio button and we'll just call this radio button example. I have some choices already created here. All right. So next, let's say we want to have a display text. And in this example, we want to say, hey, you picked the right value. Terrible example. I understand that. But what we want to be able to do is only show this display text when the user selected choice one. Now, prior to Spring 20, what we would have to do is we would have to click done, leave the screen, come back, edit the screen so we can come and set the component visibility. Because prior to Spring 20, the screen didn't know about the other screen elements that you've added to the screen here into after you left it. So if you went to screen visibility in winter, you wouldn't see the choice. So if I came through and I said, we're going to do screens. And now when we look, we can see here's my radio button example, and I can go ahead and select what I want the visibility to be. Really simple, really easy. It's going to save us a lot of, you know, going back and forth. Again, it's not huge, but from a sanity standpoint, if you're building a flow and you're trying to be quick about it, this really helps. So along that same vein is some more quality of life stuff. So if we're going to create a new record and we're going to do this using the ID. So instead of saying having a variable that represents the record itself, we're simply going to go through and say, hey, I'm going to create a new account. And then I'm going to set my wonderful values to be, let's see, let's choose the name of the account being test. And we can do so forth, more fields, more fields. But then there's this new checkbox here. This is manually assigned variables. If we click this checkbox, we can go ahead and say, well, this is where I want the results of creating this record to be stored, just like what we could in Winter 20. Without it, it's going to go ahead and create a variable for us that's named after new create record. So if I click on new and I go over to our manager, we can see that I now have an account ID from the new record that was created. There we go. That's pretty nice. Uh, again, that is more quality of life stuff. Here's a big quality of life. So let's talk about getting records. So if I go through and I say, let's go get a record and we're going to get an account. We say, we're going to choose the account. We can specify the uh, conditions. I'm just going to say get all accounts because we don't need to look at that right now. We're going to get all our accounts. Now, down here, we have a new option. It says how to store record data. We have one where we can choose the fields and assign variables. We can choose fields and let Salesforce do the rest. So this is kind of similar to how what we can do now, where we say, hey, I want the ID, I want the name, I want the address, and so forth. Uh, the choose fields and assign variables, that's essentially if we're going to be doing everything ourselves. But the big one, this automatically store fields, is huge. It will essentially mean that we no longer have to specify what fields that we want to use. Now, th the trick here is it doesn't actually get all the fields on your account or whatever object you're getting. It's only going to get the fields that you reference further on during the flow. So if you go through and say, hey, I need to use the account name in an assignment, that's okay. It will just go through and just get the name. It won't get any of the other fields on the account other than the ID. There's a really, really neat benefit to doing this. And that is we can now traverse our, um, we can now traverse the relationships. So let's say we want to go through and say, Hey, I want to pick something based off of, oh, I don't know. Let's do the owner. Well, because we have our account already specified for us, we now get these nice little arrows. And so I can go through and say, hey, go find me where the owner is. And I can go and pick a value it equals Brian Kwong. Now, 
we can't do this in winter 20 right now. And the reason why we can't do this is because we can't traverse the relationships in the get records. We have to specify the actual field. So the only way to duplicate this is you have to create a formula field on the object that traverses the relationship for you and pulls down the information to that object. And that may be something you still want to do if this is something that's going to get used over and over and over again, or potentially is going to get used in other things like list views or report reports or something along those lines. But the fact that if you're getting all fields from your good object, you can simply traverse the relationship is wonderful. It means we can do things like, uh, to grab the record type name instead of having to use IDs. This is a big deal for flow. It's going to make our lives so much simpler and easier to do. You just have to remember that this will only work if you have the automatically store all fields options selected in your get records. So for your existing flows, your existing flows where you're specifying the specific fields, you can't just suddenly traverse the relationships and come back and add that to your get records. It will fail. Trust me, I found that out the hard way. Um, so you would have to do the automatically store all fields in order to be able to do let me show that again. You would need to automatically store all fields if you want to traverse the relationships further down the flow in your decisions and assignments and so forth. All right, let's talk about another really, really cool thing. And this is a kind of a big thing. So I'm going to create a really, really simple flow. It's just a screen. And I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to go put in my flow name which I'm gonna actually delete this later because it's just a screen, I don't need it. Under show advanced, there is a new option and that is how to run the flow. And you can see we have two choices. One of these is user or system contacts, depending on how the flow is launched or system contacts with sharing and forces record level access. This is huge. This is essentially running a system level flow. So before this, all flows ran at the user level unless they were called through an automation, like sometimes through process better or apex. But if a user clicked the button, it was always based on that user, which means if the user didn't have field level access to a field, neither did your flow. And you get this really nasty flow error, but only for that user. It made debugging sometimes a nightmare. Now you have system contacts. So as long as the user has access to the record, that means they have access to the fields when they're running the flow, regardless of the field level security. However, <laughs> and this is kind of a big however you have to remember, is it's only within that flow. So if you are mate doing something and then you leave the slow flow, the user doesn't keep that access. It's only the flow that has access. It's essentially the same thing we can do with triggers and apex classes now where we have with sharing enabled, which is always a good thing because that is more secure, but it's still a really, really cool choice. Let's talk about another big one. And, and this is going to require us to build a new flow because this only applies to auto launch flows. Now this looks like a plain old normal auto launch flow. Uh, however, if we double click on the start element, uh, we have more options. So you may recall the previous one where we could do a scheduled, meaning we can run flow to happen on some sort of daily, uh, weekly schedule. We now have this new or updated records flow makes fast updates. Essentially what this means is flow can now be called when a record is edited or created and it acts as a before trigger. So, so think back about your order of execution. Right, we would start with what are the fields that are required at the system level. Then we might have Apex code running, but there's two different types. There's before and then there's after. And the before is is code that happens before the record actually gets saved to the server. After the record gets saved to the server, and then we do actions. In this particular circumstance, we are making the update, the actions, before the record is saved to the server. And this is really useful for if your flow is updating the record that triggered it. So you create a new account, you edit an account, and you want to have flow update something to that new account or the updated account. You can do that 
within flow and you can do it before it saves to the server, which means it is faster because it happens as a single transaction versus having to have the server save it, make a change, and then have the server save the record again. Now, there's a couple of caveats to what we can do here. Uh, first one is we have to specify what, what the object is. That makes a lot of sense. We also can determine whether or not it's going to happen only when it's created, if it's updated or created or updated. And I'm going to choose account again. Now, take a look on our left panel here. You'll notice when I click done, poof, actions disappear. Some other things disappear from our data. And that's because right now there are certain things that we cannot do in a before context. So this is really useful for, again, updating fields for the record in question. So if you're going to update the field or the record that just got edited, just got created, this works out really, really well. I actually did this uh, for doing something really, really simple where if an account met some sort of criteria, I wanted to go ahead and uh, updated field. We can do this in process builder right now, but this is kind of like getting process builder within flow. So our options, we can do assignments, decisions, we can loops, we can get records. So for example, we can go out and say, go grab all the related records associated to this account uh, for this object, loop through them and then do stuff. The most common one, which is about 70% according to Salesforce, 70% of all process builder type field updates are to the record that's being modified. Uh, we can simply do that by either doing a direct assignment or if there's criteria, we can do a decision. So for example, if we're going to do a decision here and we'll just say, uh, create an output here, uh, the variable that is representing the record being modified is this dollar sign record. So let's have do where the active is true. Got to put my label in and we'll relabel the default just for good measure. Okay. And then we can do our assignment and let's just go through and pick something. So we're going to pick the record again and let's just go change the uh, billing street. Okay, that's all you have to do. There is no update to the particular uh, record because it's happening in a before transact. So there's no uh, update records or anything like that. So this simple two element flow will, when a record is created, created and is active, it will update the street address for that flow. I'm sorry, for that account to be one, two, three, infinity street. That's it. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll call this before trigger example on save. And we'll go ahead and activate. Here's another quality of use thing. If you needed to deactivate a flow, you had to go back to the flow, look at the versions of that flow and then click deactivate. Now we can deactivate it directly within the flow builder itself. So just like we can activate them, we can now deactivate. I like that. Last thing, and this was kind of teased in the winter when we talked about opportunity contact rows, we can now have triggers on opportunity contact rows with apex code in spring 20. We can now do it in process builder. And because we had these before triggers, we now can do it on opportunity contact rows. So I just wanted to show you quick that opportunity contact row is something we can select as an object here. And this means we can do all those really difficult things that we've been wanting to do for a long time. Ensure that people always have an opportunity contact role on an opportunity when it's at a certain stage. You know, beforehand, we had to kind of rely on trying to run automation after the fact because we couldn't do things based on when the uh, contact role was added or updated. We had to rely on either running th something scheduled on a very frequent basis or going through and hoping that when they, they were up or go ahead and hoping that they are editing the opportunity at the same time. So we can then do a check to see if there's opportunity contact rows or automation. It, it was a headache. So now we can do a lot of cool things 
right exactly when an opportunity contact arose, created or edited it. Now, this by far is not everything in, in Spring 20 with Flow. There's a whole bunch of things, including shortcuts, more items regarding being able to find resources quickly in the toolbox based on the API name, label, description, categorizing your actions to make it easier for admins to find things, uh, doing things that reduce limits, uh, or at least hitting them more frequently due to the way that records are being updated. A bunch of other stuff. It is worth looking at the release notes, even if it's just for the flow stuff. The only other kind of big thing is that the cloud designer is no longer going to be available, but that's okay. We have this great new lightning flow builder too. We don't need the cloud designer anymore. Good riddance. I hope you like what you see. If you have questions, please feel free to post them down below in the comment section. I always look at these and I do my best to respond to every single one of them. And stay tuned because my next episode of Wizard Apprentice, where we are continuing our journey on how to use Flow, is coming soon. So, let's go cue the ending screen. Hey, thank you very much for watching. If you want to get a cool shirt like this, you can go to thewizardnews.com slash shop and you'll find shirts like this as well as stickers, coffee mugs, notepads, even pillows. To get more videos, make sure you subscribe and then click on the little bell icon to get the notification for a future video. Remember, the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.